All right, hello there. Welcome back. As you all know, we have this beautiful little kitty here that we had to, in a previous video, uh, get the carpet cleaner for because she has trouble with eating too much and getting sick from anxiety. So we had to uh, limit the amount we fed her. And so we fed her smaller amounts in greater increments. But I think what we found, because the vet is telling us she's overweight, is that we're feeding her too much. So we want to regulate this and in order to do that we felt we needed to automate this because our paths kind of cross over sometimes during the day and one of us doesn't know what the other one's done as far as feeding goes. So what we did was we bought this PetSafe smart feeder and I'm going to be setting it up for the first time today and uh, we're going to be uh, trying it out and seeing how we like it. So. Uh, Come along and let's, uh, let's check out what we got. As you know, I'm an instruction reader. I have the instructions here. We're gonna go through them and uh, make sure everything's set up properly and then we're gonna uh, check it out and do a little experimentation and understand how it works and then we're gonna actually feed the cat, who is starving by the way, so uh, th this is very timely. So of course on the first page you have all the obligatory warning stuff. Now, the only one that really stood out that I felt uh, was important was the fact that this is not meant to be used for moist food. This is only for use with hard kibble, and they say semi-moist food, which I suspect is the soft kibble, uh, but you're not supposed to use wet food in here, and it makes perfect sense. First of all, you don't want to fill a hopper like this up with wet food. That would be disgusting. And secondly, it would be disgusting in general. Okay, so let's go through the parts, and uh, then we'll set it up. All right, so let's just stop, start at the top and work our way down. So we start here with what is the, called the, the lid and the lid latch. So let's uh, take the lid off. Very simple piece of plastic, easily cleaned. Beneath that we have the food hopper. This can also be removed and cleaned as well. And when you do remove it, it's got some fascinating stuff on the inside. You can see how the guts work. You remove this by flipping these latches on the sides both sides and you take the, the hopper off. The hopper you see is just a big chunk of plastic. This can also be cleaned. It doesn't say whether or not any of this is dishwasher safe. Um, I would assume it is, but uh, don't sue me if you try to use it in the dishwasher and it breaks. Alright, so inside this is where things get fascinating. Inside, we have the workings. We've got a small computer chip and some wiring and a motor. But what you have is this uh, conveyor belt. Now, this system is designed to feed the cat one eighth of a cup at a time. So I have to assume that each one of these little hoppers is an eighth of a cup. So if you had it programmed to serve a half a cup, it's going to serve out four of those hoppers for the half cup of feeding. So it's got conveyor. And it's got this little arm here, it's called an agitator. And I guess that is in place uh, to go up into the hopper to make sure things don't get stuck in the hopper. All right, you have reset button, uh, which is, whoa, we'll get to that in a minute. We have the reset button, which is this tiny little hole here. I suspect you probably stick a paper clip in it and the manual feed button in LED. So this is the manual feed. Now this uh, system is controlled by your phone. You can program it to feed up to 12 times a day and I think anywhere from 1 8th of a cup up to 4 cups. Uh, I suspect if you were feeding 4 cups at a time this is probably too small a system for you and uh, you know you're not going to certainly going to feed 4 cups 12 times a day uh, and, not, and have any food left in the hopper. So I'm sure this was meant for smaller portioning. All right, we have a power cord, and the power cord plugs in underneath here. I'm going to tear things up. Power cord plugs in here. The on-off switch is here in the back. And what just fell out is the battery compartment. So this system has a battery backup. It takes four D-cell batteries and slides underneath. Now this is good. If the power goes out, the feeding will continue. Um, and uh, also it will stay connected to Wi-Fi because this is Wi-Fi enabled. 
Uh, finally, you have the bowl tray. Can you see that? And the stainless steel feeding bowl. I'm sure both of these will go in the dishwasher as well. For, for sure the stainless steel would well. All right, well, let's go through the setup process here. So the first thing, remove the components located inside the food hopper. Well, I've already done that. Wash and rinse the bowl. Uh, plug in the power adapter, and if you want, install four D-cell batteries. Well, let's go ahead and install the D batteries. Okay, just like any other standard battery installation. Okay, and we slide it in the compartment here, it's located at the bottom. And just push it closed, there we go. All right. I'm going to put the hopper back on. Now let's let's go ahead and let's go ahead and plug it in first because we have to turn it upside down. So we're going to turn it upside down. We're going to plug it in. We're going to flip the switch. And as we see, the LED is on and blinking. The LED will blink white, indicating the feeder is on but not yet connected to Wi-Fi. Uh, place the bowl in the feeder. Well, we'll place the bowl and all that when we go to actually uh, put the feeder where it's going to be located. So as we put the hopper back on, the first thing we notice is here's the agitator sticking up here. So this absolutely is used to make sure food continues to be funneled. Put on the lid and it is locked tight so that little mischievous animals can't get into it and eat the food. Okay. So that is physically set up, uh, but we have to set up the smart part of this, and that is requiring us to install things on our phone. So let me go ahead and install this, and we'll be right back to take a look at the phone. And basically, once it's installed, we follow the on-screen instructions. All right, so we accept the end user license agreement. And we enter our email. I won't share that with you. Sorry. And they sent us a, uh, a code, which we have to enter. Okay, now it says this is your feeder list. To get started, be sure your feeder is powered on and a white light is blinking. Tap add new feeder. Connect to the feeder. Press home button to exit the app. Go to your phone's set. Oops, well, I guess I should have uh, finished reading those instructions. Go to your phone's settings, Wi Fi, select Pet Safe Smart Feed, return to the Pet Safe Smart Feed app. All right, let's do that. Okay, so connecting to an unsecure Wi Fi, which is the cat feeder itself. Somebody's hungry. They can't wait. They're going to have to wait. So we're connected. No, no internet, but that's not a router. It is a device. So let's go back to the pet feeder. Continue. Select your home Wi-Fi. Okay. I will do that. And I need to enter the password for the Wi-Fi. So I'll have to look that up because it's long and I don't have it memorized. Okay, we're connecting. Almost done. What kind of friend are you feeding, cat? Name your feeder. Time zone, that's fine. Petunia's trough is offline. 
How do we bring it online? All right. Well, we need to set up a feeding schedule. Uh, we want to schedule. So, according to the the feed we have for her now, it's feed to help her lose weight. She needs to get three quarters of a cup of food per day. So we want to feed her six times a day. That means every four hours. And six, uh, one sixth of three quarters is one eighth, which is the minimum of this particular feeder. So we're going to feed her one eighth of a cup six times a day, starting at 5 p.m. and then every four hours. So let's go ahead and schedule her feed. The amount is one eighth of a cup. The time, 5 p.m. You already have a meal schedule for 5 p.m. I do not. Oh, well, apparently I do. Uh, let's, okay, so the amount will still be an eighth of a cup. The next one will be 9 p.m. Okay, so they're listing them in order. Let's add another one. Next one will be 1 a.m. Not a cup, one eighth of a cup. See how it kind of graduates up and down? One eighth of a cup, time, uh, 1 a.m. Uh, what's next? Uh, next one will be 5 a.m. Is that right? Again, one eighth of a cup. 5 a.m. And then 9 a.m. will be next. So it looks like it defaults at one cup. 9 a.m. And then 1 p.m. Whoops. Okay, so there's our six feedings of one eighth of a cup. So it's scheduled. We're not doing slow feed. We're gonna close that. Next meal is at 9 p.m. Well, she hasn't eaten today. She's probably hungry. So what I'm going to do is, I think this is manual feed. Prime, oh, we have to prime the feeder. That's one thing that's very important that's in the instructions. Of course, as you see, the, the feeder trough cups have nothing in them. So we have to, you have to prime it or run food through until it actually starts dispensing. So we haven't done that yet. We haven't added any food. Let me, let me go ahead and add some food here. That way we have it primed. We're going to put the bowl under here so we don't make a mess and we're going to prime this. Okay, so it slides right here. The cat is starting to lose her mind because she's hungry. Prime the feeder, five eighths of a cup. You hear it? Oh, the hopper, you can see the food being agitated and going down in the hopper. Super cool. And there we go. So, let us go ahead. One eighth cup snack. Okay, that is the manual feed. So we're all set up, pretty simple. Um, the next thing to do is to test it because the kitty's hungry. We want to test it right now. Sorry about the lighting, I had to modify it a little bit. But uh, I'm gonna go set this up in the feeding area and we're gonna feed her and see how she likes it. So come along with us to the bathroom where we keep her feed and then we will uh, run it and check it out, okay? Be right back. All right. So ready? We're gonna manual feed. Snack, one eighth of a cup. 
I'll make them a cup snack. And it works. Can we have some food? All right, so I want to go ahead and wrap this up really quickly. Uh, I didn't have time uh, earlier to do a proper finish to the video, so I just want to mention a few things we've discovered since. Pros and cons. Um, so first of all, as you could see in the video, uh, Petunia was very tentative. It was a new environment. She was very curious, a little afraid. Um, she's, she's a slightly skittish cat. She was abused as a kitty. Uh, we adopted her and she was uh, recovered by a vet and uh, you know she's she's always had a little bit of skittishness about her so so she was a little afraid but uh, but she did she was hungry so uh, that helped uh, entice her to go ahead and, and check it out and eat so she did she ate about a little bit probably not as much as she wanted to uh, when my girlfriend got home, we attempted to connect her phone to the feeder. And what we discovered was that you can only have one phone attached to the feeder as the master of it at a time. Uh, if I wanted to connect her phone instead of mine, I would have to do, reset the thing, factory reset it and reinstall. So that's kind of a, a bummer that we both can't be attached to it but you know the idea is we want to do what's uh, right for the for the cat so that she gets the proper amount of nutrition throughout the day uh, without there being any inconsistencies in volume or timeliness so this is perfect for that we're perfectly happy with it for what it is um, I'm waiting to hear the thing go ping at one in the morning as it's dropping kibble in but you know, it's not much different than from when she was waking us up at three o'clock or whatever to be fed because we were, again, feeding her very small amounts throughout the day. So she was hungry. So I think it's gonna suit our needs just fine. Um, it is a higher end item. Um, it was extremely pricey uh, at running about, I think about $189. I know, but you know what? The cat's worth it. Our pets are worth it, aren't they? Um, you could probably shop around and find better prices, but it was all of the features that it had, the ability to uh, control the, the meal size and schedule it the number of times per day. There was a, a few that could schedule, but none as many times as we wanted to feed her. So I think it's all going to be all gonna be good and uh, 
you know, I think uh, hopefully we'll be able to get her uh, weight back under control. It's not like she's a fat cat, but um, for her age, she's only three. She's got quite a significant uh, primordial pouch, shall we say. All right. Well, we're happy so far. We'll see how it goes over time. Uh, if we find anything significant, maybe I'll check back in. But uh, I, I think it's uh, uh, hopefully the value is there for the price we paid for it. Uh, but we'll, we'll see soon enough. Thanks for coming by and uh, appreciate your time as always. We'll see you later.